Hey everybody, this is going to be an, inform an information video, not a repair video, so uh, going to go over a few things, valves, o-rings, sponges, seals, just things of that nature, just uh, so you'll know. Uh, you know what uh, you might need you know to for those of you out there that are uh, repairing your own lighters this is basically an information video for you guys all right so I'm this is go not going to be in any particular order but since I have these valves out here I'm going to going to go ahead and start here first um, in past previous videos, you've, uh, you've seen me work with, uh, valves like this, and I might have said they was non-repairable, but as time goes by, you kind of figure out, well, it's, it's got to be a valve that pulls apart because inside here, let me zoom in on this, all right, yeah, that's a lot better. And this is what you call, this is what you call a filler flame adjustment valve, okay? And, uh, I don't know if I got a sponge in here or not, but usually in the bottom of here, let me look here and see if there's one in one of these. I think there is isn't. I'm thinking in maybe this one. Well, anyway, I probably took all the sponges out of these. Anyway, uh, guys, uh, these are pretty much what you'll see inside about every butane lighter you got today. You know, whether it be your, uh, you, you know, whether it be your. Uh, flame, you, you know, your torches, or whether it be your soft butane, this is pretty much what you're going to see. Uh, they even have uh, this here in a very high quality pipe master. You'll see this type of flame adjustment in your I am Corona pipe master. Now, I always thought that uh, if this was leaking inside this seal, that uh, it was non-repairable, but the fact of the matter is, like on this one, for instance, that comes apart. There's a spring in here, all right? And you can just push the inside out of it with the appropriate tool, which, let me try this, all right. There's what you get. You get this valve right here, which has a really small seal on it, okay? So these are repairable. Keep in mind, though, that these are pressure fitted. So when you're taking these apart, you know, try not to bend them up, okay? Just grab something on here and something on here and just pull out this way, all right? Because this is a very thin tube here. So you, know, you don't want to wiggle like this and end up bending it and then not stay together because this needs to be able to turn still. When you turn this, it needs to still be able to turn this. So it can come in here. When you turn this down, there's a little sponge in here or what, what you can call a pressure regulator. Now, you know that more when you tighten this, the more tighten that you do on this, it squeezes that sponge down like this. And what it does is, is the more you turn this, tighten it, squeeze it down, the less gas comes through the sponge, which regulates your flame height, okay? All right. So here, in, in under, this is spring-loaded here, all right? This valve, say, for instance, it's spring-loaded. And you can see on the top here that this is this valve system right here is actually pressure fitted. 
down inside this body here. Now you're going to have to just come up with a tool and, and pull on each one of these. Maybe get a, uh, you know, try to find something to hold this without you don't want to squeeze on these guys. You, you can probably see what I'm talking about. You want to squeeze on these. You want to pull these out. But what I recommend doing is, is for you pull these out, take your seals off here. All right. And get you a torch and heat this up a little bit right around here. All right, you don't need to heat it till it gets hot, guys. What you want to do is just expand this metal a little bit, so it'll make pulling this center valve out a lot easier. Okay, now when you get down in there, there'll be a spring and there'll be a seal and an O-ring. So you're possibly going to need to replace those. The spring should be good because you're not going to heat it that much. It's going to take tension out of it. But uh, anyway, keep that in mind. That's that. All right. Now, concerning O-rings, you guys can probably see. Let's zoom in on this valve here, say, for instance. You guys can see that when you go to put, and you're not going to know, you know, say for instance, what size O-ring comes on these, and you're probably not going to get the exact O-ring on these things, because unless you have the exact part by the manufacturer, you'll just have to come as close as possible. But what you want to do is, is what you want to do is, guys, when you're, when you go to find when you want to determine the size of O-ring you, you want to use, you want to find out the OD of the part you're using right here, which is 4.41. So the O-ring that you put on, you want to have it an outer diameter larger than 4.4. Okay, I would use a 4.5. Okay, that's what I would use. Now... In order to determine the CS size, which is the cord size, what you'll need to do is, is after you take your O-ring off, you'll just need to get in there and measure. Sometimes that, that looks pretty close to maybe a one inch, or a, excuse me, a one millimeter cord size on this, but it's going to vary with each lighter, okay? Now, if you ever measure one and you don't have the exact uh, uh, thickness that you need, which is cord size, then use the, the widest one you can get, okay? And if you can fit two of them on there to take it, then go ahead and fit two. But if you can't, as long as you got an O-ring on there, uh, you know, uh, within, or within reason, will work then go that route there all right now I buy uh, all of my uh, I buy my anything I got a one millimeter cord size and let me show you what I'm talking about cord size cord size guys this is your o-ring here when you're CS when you go to water CS is is cord size and that basically means the thickness this in here is pretty close to one millimeter all right that's what they call a CS measurement OD measurement is going to be here it's going to be a, an outer diameter measurement so that's just a little under three and a half okay so if you want to determine uh, you know in here what you do is take the, you take the, like the 3.52, say for instance, you take that, you write that down, and you subtract 0.96 from the outer diameter, and that'll give you the uh, space that's in between right here, which is called the ID, the inner diameter, OD, outer diameter, and the cross section or cord size. 
All right. Really pretty easy once you get on to it. You know, it's, uh, it took me, you know, it takes you a little while to catch on to this stuff. But once you do it for a while, guys, it's just kind of like second nature. You'll be guessing what cut size O-ring you need. And when you go to measure it and stick it on it, it'll be exact. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, um, when I order about the smallest size that you can get here in the United States, as far as cord size or cross section, whatever you prefer to use. I just prefer to use cord size. And from this point on, we'll go with that. Okay, cord size. About the, the smallest you can get here in the United States is the one millimeter cord size. This is a 1.5 millimeter OD by a one millimeter cord size. Okay. All right, now, one millimeter cord size is pretty standard here in the United States, and I buy my uh, stuff from O-Rings and More when it comes to that. Now, O-Rings and More does have two Buna 70 grade O-Rings that are smaller than one millimeter in the cord size, and these are the two right here, guys. You can see it's a two and a half millimeter OD by a .66 millimeter cord size. And this is here is a three millimeter OD by a 0.68 millimeter cord size. Okay, these are the only ones, the smallest ones, uh, as far as cord size go, cord size goes, that uh, I found on O-rings and more. Okay, and as far as uh, on these cord sizes here. Uh, I go from I go from the one okay from the one point one and I would get all one point one and get the half sizes one point eight and you know one point five one point eight two two point two two point five two point six because sometimes you're gonna use these on different things and you know you need the you need the different uh, you need the different sizes get as close as you can because you don't want to put something on there that's really really thick it, it you know and it's real tight when you screw your part back in or you try to assemble stuff you don't want that you just want a nice you want a nice resistance say for instance when this is sitting in the lighter here and these o-rings are on here you don't want to have to put something in there you know and, and turn it down you should be able to just grab this with your finger and feel a nice resistance to it. And that means it's sealed well. But yet it's not so overly tight that's going to cause undue stress on your O-rings and, uh, you know, and, and maybe even cause a leak later on or a micro leak of some sort, which you're going to want to test for anyway. Anytime you put O-rings in on something like this, you want to test to make sure you don't have a leak. Anyway, uh, I buy these uh, one millimeter cord sizes, and I would buy this all the way up to seven to eight millimeter OD in the different sizes. The reason is I would buy them for that is uh, because if you get a filler valve, say for instance, like this, okay, this is a Zama fill valve, all right. Now, this is an 8.9, okay? So these are, Zama has some of the largest fill valves, filler valves. So you can, you, you know, you can go up to nine millimeter if you want, but if you want to get an eight, you can always stretch it a little bit too, okay? And, uh, and you know, what I mean by stretch is when you put your O-ring on here and you stretch it out to put, to put it on your part. And usually on these fill valves too, it's always a one millimeter CS. You might get certain lighters like Dunhill Roller Gas, and they have a flat washer. Okay. Now, uh, if you put a one millimeter cord size on Dunhill Roller Gas, uh, your little cap here won't fit flush with the body. It'll stick out a little bit. Okay. So you want to get. You want to get uh, varying uh, cord.
chord sizes uh, on uh, that as well especially for like if you're working on Dunhills you guys some guys just you know they source the original washer but an o-ring will work as long as you get the proper one because once that gas valve's seated down in there there's going to be no reason to remove it turn it or anything unless it starts leaking years down the road and when it gets seated in there uh, and there's no leaks you really don't have anything to worry about and another thing i do too sometimes you'll get a lighter and uh listen this is a filler valve cap okay and I think that fits on here. Yes, it does. Well, listen, you know me, if you ever listen to any of my videos, or very many of them, I've always stressed that uh, you put your filler valve cap back on. And the reason I say that is because, you know, you're putting gas in here by pressure, and you don't want to get a bunch of pocket lint dust, so you keep your lighter in your pocket. And you get a bunch of flint or dirt or micro uh, items, things you can't even see. And you start filling it up. The next thing you know, uh, you got a leaky valve because you got something down in there. It's uh, in between the seal and the seat. Okay. So always keep these fill valve caps on. All right. Now, here's, here's what I like to do. Say, like, for instance, on this. I like to keep them on just finger tight, okay? Now what I'll do sometimes is, is because, uh, you know, they can get loose and they can eventually, you know, maybe work their way out. What I'll do is, is I'll just get an O-ring, a small O-ring, and, uh, and I'll uh, put it around here. Maybe a thin O-ring, maybe a half millimeter, maybe a, you know, whatever you got, you know. And just put it around there so when I snug it down, you know, with my fingernail, it's not going to loosen up because it's just uh, got a little bit of pressure on there from me snugging the O-ring down against itself. So that's what I would do on that, okay? Uh, all right. All right. Now, another thing. Nitrile rubber, Buna, and Buna 70. Don't, they do have Buna 70. They've got maybe 60 in places and 50. Uh, the higher this number is, like a, a, a 9 is going to be a harder O-ring, and a 6 here is going to be a softer O-ring. Buna 70 is the standard. And the reason I say that is, is because, folks, <laughs> I tell you, I want to show you something here. Like I said, this is a Buna 70 here. Look at this. Well, you know, watch it. Watch that go, why don't you? I do better than that. I don't know how many times I picked that stuff up on the floor, but see what I'm talking about? We got a stretchy point here. All right. That's the... Uh, that's the 70. All right. So, I'm going to go up here. And this is a Buna grade rubber here. All right. But, it's 90, it's 90 duro. Ninety D duro means short for durometer, which is a uh, hardness. It's a hardness scale. Watch it. See, folks, they're just they're very little give in that. I'm gonna tell you what, folks. When it comes to using a a, a durometer ninety hardness scale on a on no ring. It better it better fit right on what you need uh, with very little stretching because otherwise if you try to stretch it out even more and I've done it folks you'll just break them they're that hard but I tell you where I like to use my 90s on I like to use my 90 durometer 
O-rings on a filler valve, like I just showed you. And the reason is you can tighten your filler valve down more without uh, worrying about getting a leak, so to speak, you know, as some uh, softer might have a tendency to squeeze out or wanting to turn uh, a little bit more. But that's the only reason. I'll be honest with you, I've got... Uh, I've got these O-rings here that uh, I'll probably just you know, hardly ever ever use right here because they're just so hard. And that was for me just not knowing that, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a 90 Duro is uh, just too hard to work with. Okay, keep that in mind as well. All right. Next thing I want to I want to show you here. I want to zoom in on this. Is sponges. Well, hold on here. Let's go through this. No, no. We'll do it like I wanted to do. Sponges. Here's a sponge I like to use. Get these out of a. Oh, what was it? Type of lighter. Scripto lighter it was. I got it at the Dollar Tree store. This you can see how it's got a porous sponge, right? And on the back side, it's got like a white cloth. These are my favorite sponges. These are just nice. Because they remind me of a sponge. These are really nice. Now, some of these lighters you get, sometimes you might have something like that in it. And next time you might get a lighter that's got something like this in it. Nevertheless, it does the same job, but I don't like them near as well. And the reason I don't like them near as well is because they're hard to compress. All right, they're really hard. That's almost, I just don't know. That's just almost like this. You can just tell it's, it's, it's a lot more rigid than uh, this one here. All right, you can see what I got there. Now I want to show you, too, another sponge here. This is an old sponge. This is the type of sponge, if you guys got a Zama butane lighter right here, this is what you're going to find in it. See how thin that is? Now a lot of times, guys, I'll use these sponges, reuse them, because if... If I put a sponge like this on it, say for instance, I will not be able to get that because, let's see here. A Zama lighter is for those that might not be familiar. A Zama lighter, guys, has the old flame adjustment wheel right here on the side all right and you use your thumb now if you get a real thick sponge that you've got to compress it down to uh, squeeze the sponge down and stop your flame sometimes these flame adjustment wheels on these Amos can get really really hard if you use a real what I call dense hard sponge so I'd, I'd stay away from sponge like that and I really would and uh, and uh, I think another reason too is is uh, you want something too that the hole like right here you want that hole that's going to sit around your little uh, pin so to speak you want that to be tighter in this hole sometimes these holes here are bigger so which means that you got to squeeze even tighter but if I was going to rebuild the Zama, get you a Scripto lighter and use this sponge here. All right. Now, like I said, thickness is, uh, sometimes the thickness matters on your wheel because them screws, the more you got to screw them down, the tighter they get. Now, if it gets to the point where you have to, cut this white backing off and stick on it and stick down, okay? That all depends on how much thickness you need on your sponge. On any lighter, actually, because you when you take your old sponge out, you want to see how thick it is. Because if you 
use a thicker sponge than, say, for instance, let's just take this roll of gas right here. If I use a thicker sponge on this, this here valve that I screw down, this is the main adjustment valve, it's going to stick out even further, okay? The idea is, is not to get them where they stick out at all, just to be flush and a little bit in, if it, a little bit in when you tighten it down. All right. This here uh, Dunhill that I bought here, uh, I bought this on eBay. It's had some use on it. But uh, this lighter has got the smoothest. This lighter's got one of the smoothest flame adjustments on it I've ever had. I mean, it's buttery smooth. Just works great. I don't know if you can see it, but there's still a flame there. This works like a charm. Anyway. Okay, so if I was you, look at just my advice from doing this a few years. Get you one of these sponges here. Let me zoom in as close as I can. This is what you want. All right. I tried to source these guys. I can't source them. You know, I tried to look on Chinese websites everywhere. I tried to source them. I, I just haven't had no luck on that. If you guys happen to have luck on that, then, then you're good. But, uh, and another thing too is, guys, um, excuse me a minute here. Got a little bitty spring here. It came somewhere. No, put it in there. The other thing is, too, a lot of times, guys, you'll get these lighters. And they'll have these type of sponges in them. These don't have any holes in them. This is why a lot of times you guys won't be able to, you know, get anything out of your lighter even though it's holding gas is because these sponges be all plugged up okay and this one here this is like something that might come out like an IM Corona lighter it's got a it's got a metal weaved uh, on the back of each right here all right now I don't like if you want to, I don't know if you can see it either, but that little orifice that lets out gas here, it, sometimes it's a get mesh and it'll just plug up that orifice. Cover it so much, we just can't get no gas out of it, all right? That's why I like using these uh, sponges here. It got the little hole in it. You say, well, it's going to let gas through. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to let gas through. That's the that's the general idea. Of it. But uh, uh, what you're doing is is you're controlling how much gas goes through. Say, for instance, this is your pin. If it's down over that hole. Of course, this here sponge is bigger than this here. But if it's down over that, and like I said, you push down on it. One thing about this is, even if that thing gets plugged up, say for instance, when you start unloosening this, it's still going to let gas through because you got a little hole here. All right. So to me, it's not going to plug up all the way. All right. As long as your flame adjustment valve like this isn't stuck in there and not moving at all, you're, even though this plugs up, you're still going to get a little gas through your system. All right, that's it on that, I think. Anyway, uh, now, 
Okay, another thing I want to uh, bring to your attention here. No, I'm not promoting Altoids, guys. I just, I just keep this. All right, let me see which one I'm looking for here. I got, uh, believe it or not, these roll rings that come off different things, and, and I just keep them. Uh, okay, I'm looking for this one here. I'm going to, let's see here. Well, let's just uh, get something out here. All right. I get, you know, when you uh, go to get your sponge, out of, uh, I know that's in here somewhere, so let me find it. I uh, rebuilt a, an I am Corona stopper. I can't, there it is. So of course, it's on the very bottom, obviously. Everything's on the bottom. All right. All right, uh, you know, these are, let me zoom down here, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. These are stoppers. Okay. Here we got a, uh, a, a disposable butane lighter. All right. Now I'm going to show you. You see that little stopper right there? This is where I get that stopper. Now a lot of times, you know, them stoppers will work for what you need, but there's a, a lot of times they won't work. When you're taking this apart, guys, to, you know, save your flints. They're Chinese plants, but there's no sense of throwing them away. Save your spring or two if you want to. You might need that. All right. See where I'm at here? Now I gotta unscrew this. I'm, I'm gonna put this over my waste can and I'm gonna empty the butane out of the lighter. All right. I don't know if you've seen it, but right, right beneath there, this was like this, a sponge. A sponge and a wick. Here's a disposable sponge right here. Or disposable lighter sponge. This is uh, what uh, try to get these apart here real quick. There we go. Now, guys, these are decent sponges here, like this. These are still soft a little bit, so these are good sponges compared to that black one I showed you earlier, all right? But still, the gray with the white backing on is, in my opinion, the better ones uh, as far as sponges goes. Other than that, this is the second one down. This is good.
I also use these in rebuilding my Dunhill roller gases. I just cut them down. You know, I'll measure the inside of the roller gas valve and I'll use a punch, appropriate punch, leather punch, and get on eBay and punch it to that size. Okay, center it as best you can so you can try to keep your hole in the middle. Alright, these are, uh, uh, sometimes guys, you just gotta cut your own seal for some reason, like your own stopper, you have to cut your own, and you use those punches, and you just get you some, uh, some boodle sheet of, uh, you know, nitrile rubber, and just cut your own. All right, so use it for a stopper or whatever you need it for. So, as it, say, for instance, you know, this stopper here is, uh, you know, it's pretty decent, but the trouble I find is, is the cord right here is most generally, it's always thicker than what I need it for. All right. So when you're taking apart a lighter, it's got one of these in it, and I'll tell you, I've come up with a remedy that helps quite a bit on that to help you do the best you can. Um, see this I am Corona here, stopper. Now this is a this is a used one here. That ain't the one I rebuilt. But these, this is the type that I am Corona Pipe Master or uh, uh, Old Boy will have in this type of stopper here. All right. Now, obviously, you're not going to find what you need with this small one compared to this one. So I'm going to show you what you do. First thing you're going to have to do is you're going to need a razor blade. All right, and you're going to a nice sharp razor blade, and and this one ain't so bad, but what you're going to do is you're going to take that razor blade and you're going to cut this stem off right here, as as close to the back of this as you can. You want all the stem, okay? Just the stem only. You basically, want to cut off cut off this top head part. Save the stem. And you say, well, hey, what have I got here? Let's do a little bit of measure. Looks like I got a 2.42 OD on that. All right. So, from the same place, I get everything else. I order this. Right here. Buna 70 Duro cord. That was a 2.4. There's a 2.4 right there. You see that? What you're going to do, I'm going to explain this to you because I ain't going to do this because I want this video taking forever. What you're going to do is, after you cut that head off, so to speak, you're going to measure, of course, the thickness of it, or you can guess it. I guessed the last one I did, but you want it to be fairly close, okay? That's going to be about a millimeter thickness, okay? So what you're going to do is get your razor blade and you're going to cut off that to maybe 5.1. I can barely see this here. These are small ones. And this is here has got a 15.6 OD because it says OD. What you want to do is when you look at these, you, let me get that size is right here. It says OD. And that's OD like 2.6 to 5.1, I believe. Then there's an OD here of 12 or 15.6. 
and there's an OD here like 6 to 12. Okay, you want the smaller end, so this is one you want to click on here. I'm going to put the link to this, like I said, in my description. This guy is the cheapest, and he's the best, you know, so just order. Just order all them sizes. You know, you can change it to 30 pieces if you want, or 10 pieces. All right? But I got said 60 pieces. Can I order something? Because, you know, it's going to take a while to get it. And, you know, uh, you get a little bit of deal for ordering more. So just try to order all you're ever going to need at one time. Save yourself money in, in the long run from shipping. Usually it might take a couple, two or three weeks for this stuff to get here. But I have never had any trouble ordering off this website. All right? Again, that's AliExpress. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think I I have, but uh, um, you, you know, guys, I, I've worked. I haven't worked on in the scope of all the lighters in the world, guys. I I've hardly ever touched it. I've hardly touched. A, I, I'm just. You, you know what I mean? If I had a five-gallon bucket full of lighters, you know, I probably worked on one of them, so to speak. But there's so many different variations in, in mechanisms and on how things operate and stuff that, uh, you know, you want to try to, when, when it comes to sponge sizes, you want to keep close. O-rings, you, you got to keep close. Uh, on the, toward the original size, yeah, it can vary a little bit. But, uh, uh, you know, when them guys design them lighters, they, they got clearances and stuff. And, you know, uh, so um, that's why they just always ordered certain size, you know. So when you send your IM Crony in to, say, for instance, ARS Lighter Repair out of Henderson, North Carolina, you know, and they say, well, I need a new stopper and they need new O-rings for you know for this part here and a new o-ring for the seat here well they all they got that there they got a little schematic and it, it tells uh you know what size o-rings it get you know to to keep all your clearances perfectly because you know uh, uh you know like us on say for instance a uh a uh, electronic lighter pzo ignited lighter has to have the timing down, you know. Uh, if you press down on your igniter and it's igniting before the butane valve is open, well, your lighter's never going to light. You want on a butane lighter when you push that button down, you want it to you want it to open up as quick as possible to gas. You want that gas run through there for that spark ignites. But you don't want it to the point to where, you, you know, uh, when you let go of it, it might accidentally stay on. I got a video on there on, uh, I think it's on, I think I got it where I worked on a Savinelli pipe lighter, long pipe lighter, and I kind of explained that a little bit. Now, once in a while, too, I bought these before I bought any of them smalls. These are just watch ring, uh, watch crowned O-rings. All right. Now, you know, they're, they're not the quality. But I, I couldn't source anything that was good quality, so I still had these. Now, these here are, uh, there's some uh, O-rings in here, but there's some flat washers in this as well. So, uh, you know, it might come in handy for some of you guys out there that uh, you can get this off of eBay. All right, this one here. Just buy one of these, you're like, what, five hours or so? I don't really think you need this one unless you have something really small that you can't purchase anywhere else and you can get this. This one might come in more handy of the two. Um, all right. I'm thinking that that might be everything. I'm not exactly sure, but I think I covered pretty much everything. 
tools too, guys. Oh, let's cover a few tools. Let's do it. Now listen, I was, I had a uh, a John, I had a Ronson. Uh, no, it wasn't a Ronson. It was a Clebri of London, John Sterling lighter. Okay, and uh, it had the uh, valve in it. It had a filler valve in it that didn't have the two notches on this where you can get a tool in there and uh, unscrew it out. It didn't have that. It just had threads on the inside. So I made up a tool, but I'm going to tell you what. If you get if you're working on those lighters, grab this guys. This is the small one. This is what you need if you're working on like a a Klebri of London lighter or anything. It it, it doesn't have uh, the ability to take it out because it doesn't have any notches on top. This is the smaller end. They also make a bigger end. This is actually made for like Dupont lighter repair. Okay, this is quality product too, guys, and it works freaking fabulous. Doesn't get any better than this. This is buy this. Save yourself a headache buy this. You won't ruin your vowels trying to get them out with the old screw and screw thing and whatnot, but just go with this. All right, now also too, here's some uh, material that uh, has come out of the UK. Brass tube. There's 1.3 OD, 1.1 ID here. I got another one that's 1.2 OD and 1 millimeter ID. That comes handy. That's where that's come in handy for me is working on uh, on Flaminar F12 pipe lighters. All right. Now you can also get on there and you can order brass tube. Now this brass tube is what I what I use to uh, to. Uh, do the valve mods on my Zema filler valve mods and I also try to make some tools out of these but guys I'm gonna tell you something see this this is why you don't they don't make tools out of brass that's why the tools unless you go with something like this this might work but you can't go with anything like this okay tools that are like this that's made are always made out of the steel Leave this in here, stainless steel. All right, because it's got to be strong. You know, you got to have you, you got to have the appropriate tools to make stuff out of. I tried using this one time here. I made this to put in there to get a like a filler valve out, like maybe on a uh, Dunhill or something. Now listen, guys. All you're gonna do is is break this, strip this, and maybe strip out your filler valve. Forget that. You're going to work on taking that stuff out. Get steel. Don't be getting these brass parts or uh, the try to these brass tools. They just they just don't cut it. And you and you can get all kinds of stainless steel tube right right here like I got, you know. All the way down to uh, different sizes. These these are tubes, guys. They got holes in them. All right. I got them down as as much as one millimeter, or I should say point nine eight. I think it is. O D. Yeah, point nine nine O D on that. I don't know how they make stuff like that. It amazes me. You know, they can put a hole in something that's got a, it's less than a millimeter outer diameter. It's fascinating what they can do today. All right, there's that. Uh, you know, guys, I bought these years ago. These old, these are flints here out of China. Believe it or not, most of these here, but these black ones are in there. There's a few gold ones in there too, but most of these are the ones I've took out of disposable lighters for getting the sponges and stuff, and I save all my plants. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you, when you, if you're gonna buy a plant, guys, 
get on eBay. You got quality lighter. You want to make your lighter last longer? So, you know, if you want your lighter flint wheel to last longer, this is what you want right here. Now, the guy is selling it. He's out of Turkey. And uh, if you buy one, he charges about, what, uh, $12 a pack and charges about $10 to ship it. Me, I ain't going that route. I went and ordered a, I ordered a thousand of these, 10 packages. There's a hundred in each pack. And uh, these are made in Austria. Okay. Now what I want you to take into consideration here, that that them's uh, red flints are quality flints, guys. There just ain't anything better than these flints, because these are from the manufacturer that designed the flint, okay? The amount of ferro in each one of them, or ferrocium, whatever they call that. All right. Okay, tribocker, or however you, however you pronounce that, I'm not for sure, okay? But, uh, but, made in Austria. See that? Look at this. You Dunhill guys out here. You see this? These are your old Dunhill roller gas flints. You know the ones you pay 18 or 20 dollars for nine flints? Look at that. What's that say right there? Made in Austria. But, you know, I just, on that last video I got, or I don't know, which which one it is, but I think it's the previous video I did on a uh, on a Mark Cross lighter. Uh, I contacted that guy a month ago. You know, he wanted one hundred seventy five dollars for that lighter, and I simply told him, I said, "Sir, I said, uh, you know, I said it's just too much." And I finally emailed him a time. He finally dropped it down one fifty, and I know this is because. You know, I, I think I looked, and I think that lighter had been on eBay for sale, what, what, 900 days or something like that. Listen, folks, if you got something on eBay for sale, and it's been on there for 900 days, folks, your price is too high. Uh, you know, you can charge what you want, but it's only going to be worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I finally said, you know, I shot him a price, and he didn't want to do it, and and, uh, you know, he's a nice enough guy. And I finally, you know, I see he dropped it to 150 And I thought, well, he, you know, and I just said, well, I'll offer him $112 ship for it, you know. And, uh, and I turned around and fixed it and sold it to a gentleman, a friend of mine, and charged him $108. Well, you see my video. It took me, what, two, two and a half hours to work on that lighter. So, and, you know, and, uh, so you know, they ain't like a, there wasn't a lot of money in on that in on me making on that lighter, uh, especially considering the time I spent on it. But you know, I had the joy of working on it, and I, and I knew it was a beautiful lighter, and I knew that I had some people that'd probably appreciate that. Especially one guy in particular, I called. He bought it. Matter of fact, I had payment for the lighter sitting on my desk here before I even got the lighter. The kind of guy he is. He's a real nice guy. Uh, but anyway, I told him, I said, listen, then after I, I uh, anyway, I emailed the guy back after I repaired the lighter and sold him. I said, listen, I said, just so you know, I said, uh, you know, if you if you looked at that video, you see how the O-rings, that lighter is basically new. It might have been used as a display model because it did have a little dirt around the, or uh, residue from butane around the flame valve area there. But uh, um, anyway, I, I knew it had been used very little, you know, so I thought, well, that's a good lighter. So I went ahead and bought it. I sold one I had before that I rebuilt. I sold for 180 and I turned around and sold this other one for 180 But, uh, you know, you, you see, um, you, I seen the exact same lighter. Uh, again, there's another one on, uh, I don't know where it's at. It might be USA, but they want 400 something dollars for it. You know, another guy wants 175 and. These these been up for sale on eBay for you know like a thousand days or something like that. You think well how do you know that? You can go to Pick Click, and it'll say how long it's been on eBay if you check out that website there. Uh, 
but uh, it'll tell you how many days it's been on sale. Now, I just shoot an offer. I ain't trying to tell somebody what their stuff ain't worth. You know, it's up to them. But it's guys, it's a buyer's market. You know, if you think it's too high, send them a message and you know, explain to them. I explained to this guy that, you know, I'm going to have to go through and fix this lighter. Because, you know, I've been sitting with the same seals in for 30, 40 years, however old, however long it's been. And I finally sent him a link back and I told him exactly. I said, listen, I got a video I've done. Spent two and a half hours on this lighter. Replaced all the seals in that was bad. And uh, and I bought it from him. I think it was uh, maybe about $112. Let's see, $12 shipping. Maybe 115 after taxes. You know, taxes and everything, and I turned around and sold for 180. Uh, so, uh, you know, and I told him that, and I said, What well, I told him what I sold it for, and I said, and I told him uh, I sent him a clip to the video, and to make these guys understand that uh, there ain't nobody out there to repair that miners that I know of. Uh, um, I did find out today from a gentleman that bought that lighter that uh, Mark Cross sat for 21, that he got a hold of uh, uh, ARS lighter repair out of Henderson, North Carolina. He said he sent him an email. And he said uh, he didn't think he'd be able to repair it, you know, and uh, he said, yeah, they'd repair it, but it's going to cost them $150 to repair it, you know. So I repaired that. You know, you spend $400 on a, like a Mark Cross lighter, and you send in somebody, and they're going to charge you $150. Uh, you know, you got a $500 lighter. If I'm going to spend $500 on a lighter, this is what it's going to be right here. Dunhill Roller Gas. I bought this. This When I got this lighter, guys, it was black with a blue haze to it because it's silver plated and it had a toning. It had a 40-year toning on it. This lighter is 1980, 1981, I think it was. Had 40 years worth of toning on it. It actually looked beautiful, but after I polished it up, I thought that's brand new. Look at that. And not only that, look at the inside of this. That's a brand new lighter. And not only that, it's a pipe lighter. my opinion that's a five hundred dollar lighter you say well i see them on ebay for 350 i said yeah i sold some for 350. But you're not gonna you're not gonna get this for 350. i'll i'll set it back because that's brand new brand new old stock okay so to me you can buy a new dunhill roll of gas and spend 750 on it but even if I had to buy a brand new one compared to the old one, they said, I'll give you a chance. You got to buy, a, uh, I got two pipe lighters here and they're both new. You want an old stock and new stock? Pick the old stock guys from what I've heard. Most Dunhill guys that collect Dunhill lighters like the old stock ones. Uh, Dunhill at, one, at a certain point in time had to, had to cheapen up their design. So anyway, Anyway, guys, I think that's pretty much it that I can think of right offhand. Uh, this is this is probably it's going to be the only video on uh, you know this type here as far as uh, um, you know uh, uh, seals and stuff like that. I do want to go go over. I I've seen this. I thought I want to go over this real quick before I sign off here. Okay, you guys have probably seen these, all right? Uh, forget these. Don't pay $50, $25 a piece for these guys. The, the, the nubs break off. And uh, the worst thing about them, the worst thing about them is, is look, that's how deep they go. Guys, that ain't going to work on this. They're not deep enough. So, grab you some of that stainless steel tubing like I showed you and make your own. 
Here's one I made. I don't know if it's... But here's one I made. This ain't big enough, but, you know, look. It'll fit down in. This is a little small for that, but let me see. Here's what I'm trying to get to. Say, for instance, you got a long valve. At least if you make your own, you can go down however deep you need to go. You're not going to get that with these. Forget about these. All right? Just forget about them. Matter of fact, I got a guy out there. Uh, I'm going to send these to. He can, he can just, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Send me an email, guy. I think I got two of these somewhere. No, I think I gave one away to somebody. Anyway, I don't even mess with these. These are junk. They just don't do what you need. The only the, I, I gave the other ones to a guy because they was bigger and they was okay for taking the filter valve out of like uh, uh, I am Corona lighters. That's the only thing it was good for. Other than that, and here's another one that I made tool here out of a pipe, made like this, getting down in there, and getting that out. This here I bought off of. Uh, this is for taking down the Ronson uh, very flame valve. Okay, this I bought for here goes to you know adjusting the back of uh, here. Uh, you know, to adjust your main flame adjustment on a Dunhill. Uh, this here, tool I made out of a screwdriver. See that? Just get your little Dremel and Dremel out. That's for getting in these ones. It's got a real small internal screw for, for screwing, for adjusting your uh, maximum flame control. All right. This one here is for taking out small filler valves uh, on certain things or whatever valve that you need. Then, you know, I got several of these screwdrivers. I've, uh, you know, ground down to use for certain things. And uh, let's see, some other tools. All right. Then you can go and get you a screwdriver and make another tool that you might need a little wider and you say well i need something a little wider than that this is i've hardly ever used this guys i've used it when it comes to this i just use this all right but uh one tool that come in handy that i made was this one here it's made out of a nut driver there's a certain screwdriver or certain lighter I worked on. I think it, I can't remember what it was. It just worked out perfectly. It's made out of nut drivers. Why you here on out, guys? If you got to use anything, uh, you know, use a freaking nut driver because you got plenty of room on them too. See, you got the that much room. But even that, you can have more room. If you get your, if you get the tube that you need, the wall thickness. This here's a special tool here. This is something that you guys out there that ever worked on a Thorns gasomatic lighter. Well, you know what it's like trying to take the valves out of that tank to get them out. I think I got, let me put my glasses on. I got this in label two thorns. This is, uh, um, this is, I think it's a, I got it right here. I got one missing in my set. It's a 964 Allen wrench. Okay, guys, listen. This is a 964 Allen wrench. And I had to center drill it. Had to center drill it. But let me tell you something, guys. You can't center drill these. These are hardened. You got to get your torch and heat this up till it's reddish orange. Take the temper out of it before you can drill it. But this is the exact tool that you need. 
to work on a Thorin's gasomatic lighter. Boy, this is a beautiful lighter. All right, now when you open this up, I'm going to take this off just so uh, you guys can see what I'm talking about here, all right? I'll try to get my light over there so you can see it better. Now you want to take that seal out of there. All right, then when you get down in there, after you take that seal out, you'll get right down in there with this, and it'll pop the collar off on that. All right, that's what you need to work on a Thorns gas matic lighter. And I'll tell you what, guys, these lighters are, these lighters are just, <laughs> they're just something else. Look at the design of that, guys. Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? Look at that. Look at the mechanism on that. Now listen, you replace the you replace the flint right up there on top, so you gotta kinda like maybe unscrew that, pull that out, pull this middle piece out, lift that spring up, and put your flint down in there. All right, then you gas this up. You got to pull the tank out to gas it up too. And uh, I'll tell you another thing. What I do with them is uh, when you're gassing up them solid pin lighters, I will, I get I get one of these here off of AliExpress or wherever. They're cheaper on AliExpress. I've actually sanded and filed this down. I think so I can get in get in here too. These here just got you know, three little holes in it. So when you push down on the pin in the center here, the gas comes out of the can and goes around the pin and fills the, fills the valve up, all right? Anyway, that's what we got there. All right, this was a... Uh, the, the seals in this, guys. The 1961 manufacturing date, I believe, on these. They didn't make them very long. The guy in Germany's got them for sale. Wants $400 a piece for them. One four fifty. But, uh... I don't even like touching that with the... But look at this. I want to show you something here. Look at the lines on that, guys. See where this case goes together? Look at the lines on that. Thorns, gas matic switch on them. Patent applied. Then it's got like a, a gold plating signature or something down there. Look how that just mates all the way up and around. Guys, that's quality manufacturing right there. It's packed in China. You guys going out there and uh, and buying and paying uh, twenty dollars for nine flints for your roller gas. Now listen, I don't know about you, but I'd rather save and buy these because the same company that made these makes these. Save your money, guys. Take the money you spend on plants and uh, buy another lighter for your collection. People say, well, that ain't the, the, the same size. Well, you know what? They still work. Uh, they still work. I mean, it ain't the same size. You know? I mean, it's not. Not saying that it is. Look, I got a I've got a downhill flint in this one right here. But, uh, I tell you what, for the price, guys, 
I mean, good Lord. $20. Uh, okay, a $100 bill here. Let's figure. You got nine plants. You're paying $20 a pack. Okay, so you got $100. You got 45 plants. In a hundred dollars of Dunhill Roll of Gas, uh, these larger flints, you got a hundred dollars in forty-five flints. Man, why not spend a uh, hundred dollars in a thousand flints? And these are just as good as quality because they're made from the company that actually made the Dunhill flints. Now I didn't pay them. I bought these off a website for five dollars a pack. All right, I ain't now still at five dollars a pack. That's still pretty cashy, but if I sell a Dunhill roller gas lighter or something like that, I put one of these flints in it. That's the only reason I bought them, you know, just make somebody happy. You know, there's people out there that just, that just uh, <laughs> think you can't put nothing in a Dunhill roller gas lighter except a Dunhill roller gas flint. Well, you know, spend your money how you want. It's your money, but to me, I'd rather... I'd rather save and uh, put the money in another lighter. Of course, I'm not a collector. I don't smoke. I'm not a collector. And uh, if I was a collector, guys, whew, I'd hate it. Every lighter I'd have would be a, a quality lighter. But I, like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a collector. So I just repair stuff. I kind of enjoy doing it most of the time. Uh, I don't enjoy it so much when I got too much of it to do and, and I'm tired, but I don't mind helping people out when they're in need. I try to get, I try to do this channel here to, so you guys can do your own work on your lighters, you know, because you guys go out there on eBay and, uh, uh, you know, you buy a lighter and, you know, for, Forty, fifty dollars, say for instance, which is most likely probably too high because it probably don't work. And then you get a hold of me because you can't fix it. Well, at tag at least another fifty dollars on the cost of the lighter, which you got a hundred bucks into it. You might as well go out and 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 get you an IM Corona lighter. But you know you can save yourself some money if you learn to do your own work. Granted, not everybody can can do it. I understand that and. Uh, but uh, um, guys, don't go out there and pay. I mean, a lot of these lighters are getting, they're just getting too expensive because people see what I sell them for and they think, uh, that's why I'm just almost at the point, I just don't want, I just want to stop selling stuff on eBay because people think that, well, look at here, man, I got a used lighter here and I'm, you know, I'm getting a, uh, you know, a hundred dollars out of it, and they think, well, they go through the completed listings and the sold items and say, wow, look at this. So I'll put that up there, not realizing that they ain't never ever going to get that. I've seen, I've I've talked to somebody. That's vintage quality manufacturing at its best. All right, guys, have a good one.